Hello YouTube, welcome back to Kind Heart Homestead. It's a beautiful day here, up in the mountains of Virginia. I'm working on our off-grid solar shed on this trip, as I have been for <laughs> the last 30 trips or so. I'm up here for probably a day and a half to get some work done. Last time I was here, you'll recall that I finished the siding on my 20-foot walls. And those walls were relatively easy. All the customizations I had to do were involving the window and ripping about a foot off of the last panel because uh, it's a 20 foot building. There would have been 21 feet of panels. So I had to cut about a foot off. But now I'm here to work on the gable end walls. Every single one of those is going to be custom because of that triangular nature that deals with the pitch of the roof. It's a 412 pitch, so I should be able to calculate the cuts relatively easily. So uh, we'll see how I figure out how to do it. I'm gonna get my tools and materials staged now. I'm gonna get to work. Stick around. Before I can install the siding panels, I have to put the rat guard along the bottom. If you recall, I did not finish this on a previous trip, so I have to go ahead and do it now. This requires a couple intricate cuts to make sure there's no gap around the corner. There's not really a good way to fold it around because it comes to a point. The best I can do is have like a mitered 45, sort of how you would do it with a trim or crown molding. Not as complicated as crown molding because you don't have to do compound miters and things like that, but it's still relatively complicated because it's metal. And when you're cutting with metal, it's very difficult to control your angles. So you can see here, I secured it every two feet or so with a screw. And then I have to put the C channel around the window. And this is channel that I've used around all the windows that you've seen me do before that receives the siding. It's called a C-channel because it's roughly shaped like a C and it hooks around the panels so you won't be able to see the cut and jagged edge where I've used the hand shears to cut the openings for the windows. Moving on to the first panel, I'm starting by cutting the 412 pitch at the top. And this is an unusual situation where the window sits inside the middle of the panel instead of being centered between two panels. So this is the only situation that I've had to actually punch a large enough hole in the middle of a panel to then cut out the full perimeter of a window. So we'll see how this works, but this is a very experimental technique and I'm using all the tools at my disposal to try to uh, get this penetration complete. As you can see here, I don't really have the ideal tool. Uh, there's a metal nibbler that I need to purchase and maybe I'll have one of those before I continue the siding. But as you can see here, it's very cumbersome, very difficult, and I'm trying to avoid slicing my hand open with all these jagged edges sticking out everywhere. It was just a matter of time before I was able to cut out a section of this panel with the exact dimensions of the perimeter of the window. But it turns out that that's not the exact size that it needs to be for installation. Because this is the first panel, that has to go around a window instead of in from the side. You'll see in a few minutes that I had to cut some relief cuts to allow this to expand larger than the perimeter of the window to fit around the C-channel than to be installed. But for now, I'm using my story pole, my level, and my awl to stamp the pilot holes to get this ready for installation on the wall. And that will make sure that all of my screws are consistent along the entire face of the building. You can see here I'm cutting the relief cuts. This is a very common cut for the upper portion of the window because typically when you use metal siding, 
The C channel above each window and door goes in last, and that's because there's not really a good way to install the panel over C channel when it has to go under the C channel at the top of the wall. It just uh, would pretty much be impossible. So you can see here, I'm really struggling to fit it around the side pieces of C channel. So I have to keep making my relief cuts longer and longer until I'm able to muscle the panel and curve it around the C channel. Now that the panel's in place, I'm using my five foot level to make sure it's perfectly vertical before I fasten the screws. And these are colored match screws with a little gasket to keep everything nice and waterproof. Well, I just finished securing the panel, which I believe to be the most complex out of any of the ones on the whole building. Typically, I avoid situations like this. Situation being that a window or some sort of penetration is in the center of a panel instead of at the edge. What I did with all the other windows so far was I would cut one panel into a C shape. So it would kind of wrap around the window from one side, and then the next panel would wrap around from the other side, and then the two would meet in the middle. And that way you can slide in one from each side, and you don't really have to worry about the vertical play. With this one, it was very tricky because I already have the trim on the sides of the window. That means that when you cut a hole to the exact width that it needs to be, there's actually no way to get it. So what I did was I made these relief cuts that go out at least an inch past. And that's common for the top of the window because there's a piece of flashing that has to slide up under there later. But I had to do that for the bottom. And I might be able to shove enough sealant in there to where I don't have to worry about any wind-driven rain. But honestly, it's not a huge deal. The zip sheathing is supposed to be waterproof. Everything's taped. The uh, zip liquid flash seals the sheathing to the slab. So there shouldn't be any instances where water can get under my bottom plate. But the sealant should do it, you know, just a one-inch sliver it's not even a gap, it's just a sliver that I cut with my shears on both sides of the bottom. And I had to create those relief cuts so I could essentially bend the panel on both sides so I can wrap it around the, uh, the trim that I have. So I'm happy that's done. It kind of set the stage for what I'm expecting to, uh, to do for the rest. I really need to get a uh, automatic nibbling tool that Milwaukee makes. I don't think they have an M18 version, so I'd have to get a new battery platform, which would be M12. Either that, or I could just get a corded one from Harbor Freight. I'll have to do some thinking before I actually build the house, because I'm planning to use this as a rehearsal for all the tools and materials and processes that I need to build a house. This next one is going to have a penetration for the, the shower vent. The one there is the vent for the propane water heater. And then there's a door. And then way up there, there's a plumbing vent. You can see that PVC up there. So there's going to be a lot of smaller penetrations that I have to worry about. And I'll have to figure out how to do each of these penetrations as I go. This entire wall is going to be pretty custom. I like to work on the back of the building as a test before I move on to the front. So I'm here on the back of the building. The main entrance is on the other side. So I'm rehearsing. So I'm really not sure if I'm doing any of this stuff right. This entire wall is very custom, and I just kind of have to figure out stuff as I go. And I'm not going to go sit in my car and do a ton of research when I have limited amount of time to get work done. So you can see here I'm cutting a few strips of zip stretch tape. This is the same tape you saw me do at the bottom corners of each window sill before I installed the vinyl windows. And they call it stretch tape because you're able to really pull it. Uh, you have to kind of muscle it a bit, but you can pull it to wrap around basically any shape you want. And you can keep it pretty tight around the corners. So that way it doesn't prevent you from installing your window later or uh, in the situation. It's not going to prevent me from putting trim or some sort of gasket or something around this vent. This shiny vent here 
is the output of the vent fan that's going to be above the shower in the bathroom. Up above that is the vent for the plumbing and waste system of the building. This is the only one, and I already have the tape around that one. What I'm planning to do for this system of vents is cut a piece of PVC trim. This trim's pretty expensive, but from what I've seen on YouTube, it seems to be the standard right now for uh, trimming out penetrations in your siding. Typically, people use these for penetrations in clapboard siding, whether it's cedar or hardy board or any number of sidings. But for use on metal siding, I think it's going to work well because I'm basically going to install this as if it's a window, use the C-channel around it to receive the metal, and the white will, uh, I guess, be a pretty neutral color. It matches the vinyl windows. So my first cut matches the 412 pitch of the roof, and that's going to sit inside of the C-channel instead of the siding, just for this little 6-inch wide sliver. I did buy a tool recently to cut out drywall circles where my puck lights go inside of the shed, but I figured this would be a good test of it. I've never actually used it before, but if it can cut through drywall, it should be able to cut through this PVC material because it's very easy to cut. You can see here, I'm struggling a bit with the tool because I've never used it. You really have to provide even pressure uh, to make sure that these blades are sinking in symmetrically. But once I got a hang of this, it was just a matter of spinning it, letting the tool cool a bit, and then spinning it again until my cut went all the way down through, and I got a perfect circular hole just larger than the diameter of the exhaust vent that I'm placing this around. The next cut on this piece of trim is necessary for the PVC plumbing vent that comes out of the building at the top of the wall. And this is so close to the C-channel that there's actually not enough room um, for the material to go around the PVC. It's really just going to go under it like a U. But since I have this hole saw that's the exact same diameter as the PVC pipe, I figure I'll just cut this as close to the edge as I can, and then I'll customize the hole to make it shaped like a U. You can see me doing that here with my circular saw. And this is a pretty complex piece of trim because it has two penetrations for vents that go through the siding. But I'm hoping that this works well, especially because this PVC trim material is so expensive. I'm using my cordless trim router to essentially round off this sharp edge. And that's just because I want to make sure this goes on as easy as possible and that there's enough room to accommodate the rounded edge created by the zip stretch tape. I'm also creating some pilot holes so I can recess some stainless steel screws directly into the siding without splitting the material.
another short work trip. Fortunately, because I can't sleep, I barely get to make any progress when I'm up here. But I got half of this wall done. I'm pretty pleased because it's the complex half. The window in the middle of the panel, the two vents with this custom uh, trim block that I built. I put the top piece of trim here over this window. That's the first one I've done so far. Let me bring you around to the front door because just before I packed up, you got to see me install the uh, trim that receives the siding. So maybe next time I'm here, I can start with the first panel going over this door. I'm about to get out of here. Plenty of daylight left, but I have no energy left. So I'll see you next time on Conhart Homestead. Thank <laughs> you.